How are you doing? Welcome to the weekly woodworking wrap-up review episode number 34. I'm your host David Petrudo and this is a show where we highlight active woodworkers in the community and talk about the latest woodworking news and events. Today we're going to talk about the most recent and most interesting woodworking videos, some naughty naughty trees, what you guys find difficult about selling your work and much more. So grab a drink and stick around. Today I am drinking number 22 Porter. This is out of West Texas and it is a very good beer. I had some the other day. So let's talk about these naughty trees. Check this out. Yeah. And then check this out. Yeah, and then check this out. <laughs> yeah, so this was posted by I F and Love Science, and you can check out that link down below. That's some crazy stuff. Trees do not know how to make trees. All right, so if you are watching this today, then tonight I have a live Google Hangout on air where you can ask me questions via chat, and we're going to talk about craft shows, Etsy, social media, YouTube, and how to sell your wood crafts. Um, so once again, that is happening Tuesday, August 26th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is tonight if you're watching this today. Uh, basically, this is a, an experiment for me to test the waters uh, doing a live event so I can do more live events in the future. It'll be about 20 minutes or so. So uh, if you're around, come hang out with me, grab a beer, and ask me some questions. All right, so let's dive right into our videos. This first video, Build Your Own TARDIS by Steve Ramsey. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so apparently this has something to do with Doctor Who. I've never watched Doctor Who. I've never seen an episode of Doctor Who. We don't have cable. But apparently this TARDIS or a TARDIS is some sort of time machine. This is a limited tools project and Steve said this was his most requested build. It is pretty impressive and it, it tears down so you can store it away when you're not using your time machine, I guess. I don't know, it's pretty cool. Steve is a great instructor and shows you great, awesome projects. So you wanna check that out. Build your own TARDIS by Steve Ramsey. Next video, oh, building a walnut coffee table by Matthew Cremona. Oh my goodness. This is absolutely beautiful. This is a solid wood project. It's got drawers and breadboard ends and dovetails. It's so beautiful. Uh, this is a part one of a multi-part video. If you are not subscribed to Matthew's channel, please click off of this page, go right to his channel and hit subscribe because Matthew is an amazing woodworker and just you got you got to check out his videos and I cannot wait to see the progress of this coffee table so really good stuff Matthew good stuff next video hand cut dovetails with Frank Klaus this is by wood and shop I don't normally show non-project videos and I don't normally show multi-part videos but I wanted to introduce you to this channel it is a must subscribe channel Joshua the host of the channel teaches you how to use hand tools in a very professional way. Very well shot, great production, and uh, this one is not a typical video by Joshua. He is touring Frank Klaus's workshop, and Frank Klaus is one of my favorite woodworkers. And oh my goodness, Frank's shop is a dream shop. It is so beautiful. So you can get a full tour in part one of the video. And this is part two where Frank shows you how to cut dovetails by hand. It's one of the things he's known for. I had the pleasure of meeting Frank a couple years ago and he told me that he likes my name, The Drunken Woodworker. Hopefully I get to see Frank again next month at WIA. He's gonna be one of the instructors there. Oh, and if you look close in the video, along the, the ceiling is lined with beer bottles. So you know Frank loves beer. So Frank, if you happen to watch this show, let's have a beer together, please, please, please. Speaking of woodworking in America, let's talk about events. So next month, September 12th through the 14th in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, is Woodworking in America put on by Popular Woodworking. I will be there. If you plan on being there, come find me and say, hey, uh, there's a link and info down below all kinds of classes and then there's the, the the showroom floor where all the vendors all the the who's who of woodworking vendors is going to be there showing you their new stuff or showing you 
trying to sell you stuff. It's just good. I know Steve Ramsey is going to be there as a spectator, as well as Bob from I Like to Make Stuff. Most of the guys from the NWA podcast, Roy Underhill is teaching there along with Frank Klaus. So, oh, it's gonna be so much fun. It's always so much fun. I learn so much. I get to see all these tools. You get to use the tools in person before you get to buy them. And then it's a very social event. So at night, everybody's hanging out, uh, going to local pubs, drinking beer. It's, it's always a good time. Another major woodworking event happening soon by our friends up north in Canada, the Woodworks Conference in Perth, Ontario. That is September 26th through the 28th. There will be more information in the link down below. I wish I could be there. Mm, but I'm not sure I can get back into Canada for reasons I don't want to talk about right now. All right, podcast. There was just one this week, and that is Shop Talk Live number 66. Last week, I asked you guys, do you or would you like to sell woodworking projects? If so, what do you find difficult about it? And I got a couple of good comments and questions. So Jandel wrote, I would like to start selling items. I think the block for me would have to be not having enough of the same item. It seems if I'm going to make something, I would need to have multiples. Should I just sell one of a kind items or should I take the time and effort to be able to sell multiples or a few different items? Well, my answer to that is to keep your prices down, you have to batch out a bunch of the same things. So uh, for instance, if you're going to make a pencil holder, uh, if you make just one pencil holder, that's going to take you so much time. But if you make 10 of those all at the same time, you're going to use your time a little bit more efficiently and it's not going to take you as long when you're, when you're batching it out. Therefore, if you're basing your prices on the amount of time you put into it, you can keep your prices a little bit lower. So I highly suggest having multiples of the same item and batching them out. That is my suggestion to you. John wrote, I would like to sell my projects. The problem I have is where I live, there is not a good enough flow of traffic that enough people can see my stuff. And I'm not always sure where to price my stuff at. Well, John, there's this thing called the internet and there's hundreds, maybe thousands of people on the internet all at the same time. And so that's a good flow of people. Um, there's many places you can sell your stuff on the internet. So there's that. Uh, pricing stuff. I get asked about pricing stuff all the time. It's a really hard question to answer. And so what I do is I guess I, how much would I pay if I saw this item and that price might be high or low, but if you batch out your items and you're selling a bunch of them and you're at a craft show and that item sells really fast, you have your prices too low. If it doesn't sell at all, you probably have your prices too high. And so then the next show, I will adjust my prices accordingly. I don't change my prices during the show and I don't suggest that. So um, guess and then go from there and, and, and see what works, make adjustments. Call an audible. All right, Jay wrote, whether it is selling smaller knickknacks or larger furniture, how do you figure out what to sell before you make the time investment to build it? I have plenty of ideas that I want to make, but have no clue if the market wants to buy it. I can tell you this, I sell a lot more small and cheap stuff than I do the more expensive stuff. Um, I make a lot of bandsaw boxes and I find that I don't sell that many bandsaw boxes at these shows. Uh, I don't think people are willing to pay a hundred or 200 bucks for a box, but if I have a pencil holder or an art brush holder or whatever, and it's 20 bucks or less, those are the items that seem to, to sell well, you have to remember a lot of these are impulse buys. So people are willing to spend 20 bucks, but they might not be willing to spend 150 bucks. So small, cheap items that you can batch out. Those are the ones that sell well. So that's our questions. I'm going to answer more questions like this on the live show tonight. So be sure to tune in. If you are watching this in the future and tonight has already happened, uh, the recorded live show will be up for you to watch somewhere. So check that out. All right, new wrap up videos every Tuesday and I put out new project videos every Friday. If you like what I do, you can buy me a beer. Uh, don't forget to check out my Google Hangout on air tonight, Tuesday, August 26th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll discuss selling and marketing your work. My question for you this week is, what would be your dream workshop? I know what mine would be, so let's discuss that next week. All right, guys. Stay passionate and make something.